Hi, I'm Adeline Bebo, and today I'm going to be teaching you about B2 compulsories. In addition to these leveling up from level B1, the skills that we're going to introduce in this level are four finger twirls, combination rolls, thumb flips, backhand flips, and horizontal tosses. So of course, it's important to know that your students must be able to do these, but now we're going to put them to the technical test by putting them in the compulsory format. So let's get started on these B2 compulsories. I'll start by doing a brief tutorial of each individual compulsory, and then I'll wrap up the video by showing the complete set of compulsories facing both front and back, just so you can get a good idea of what it's supposed to look like. Our first compulsory in the B2 level is the right hand vertical forefinger. Now, although these compulsories are not particularly challenging in and of themselves, what makes them so difficult is being able to read them and then translate that into movement. So I'm hopeful that I'll be able to help you with that today. So we start, as always, with both hands behind our back. We're gonna start thumb to big end, and since our right hand is the first hand to go, we're gonna start right hand, thumb to big end. So that's gonna start behind my back, and the first maneuver that we're going to do is a flourish. So make sure that that arm is extending all the way over your head, and your left arm is going to go immediately to this hand on hip position. Anytime we do a hand on hip position, which will be many, many times throughout the course of this set of compulsories, you wanna make sure it's a really nice, firm hand on hip. We don't want any of this, we don't want our fingers apart. Your fingers should be totally together, and it should be a straight line from your middle finger all the way to your elbow. So it should come a little bit low on the hip, right on top of that hip bone, fingers together, nice and straight. Although this feels a little bit uncomfortable, it definitely looks the best, and it's what the judges are going to be looking for. After our hand goes to our hip and we complete our flourish, the next thing that's going to happen is a whip. It's really important that your hand completely disappears behind your back on this whip. What you don't want is you don't want it out here, and you don't want any additional shoulder movement as this happens. It's really important that the shoulders remain super square to the front, and your hand disappears behind your back. As it comes around, you're gonna tuck your elbow in. The baton is going to switch just to the index finger. This is gonna happen really smoothly as it goes up and over the shoulder. So as this is happening, the way that I usually teach this is your, finger, your three fingers here are gonna disappear behind the baton as it's coming up and over your shoulder here so that we can go one, two, three, four, lay out. And what's really important about the four finger twirls that happen out to the side is that your palm is always up. Of course, your shoulders are going to be square to the front here as well, but it's really important that the palms stay up. You don't want it to rotate. You don't want it to be down gonna happen right here out to the side. It's gonna be a soft, natural elbow bend out to the right side. One, two, three, four, roll out across the back of the hand. That's the only time the hand turns from palm up to palm down. I'll face this way so you can see. One, two, three, four, flip. The fingers latch on the top with the pinky and the thumb. Squeeze with the thumb and it flips down to the side. And that's how you complete the roll out. So we go flourish, whip, one, two, three, four, roll out, flourish, and close. Some other important details about compulsory number one is that, of course, your feet are not going to move, but you want them to make sure, you want to make sure that your feet are really close together. You don't want any space there, especially, um, you can see with the contrast of the four and my shoes here, but it's going to be really, really important that those feet are completely locked and they're pointed forward. Sometimes what I see is kids will just kind of get started and their toes will be a little bit off. So it's important that you teach them that their toes should go straight forward and their shoulders, their head, and their hips stay square to the front the entire time. Make sure that that arm is extending completely on all of these flourishes, both at the beginning and the end. And it's always important to remember, I think that this was something that stressed me out when I was an athlete, was the speed of the compulsory. There is no required speed. There is no time limit on these compulsories. So make sure that they go at a speed in which they're comfortable. Of course, it can't be too slow or else it's not going to be successful. And sometimes too fast is going to be unsuccessful. So find that happy medium, find that perfect speed for them, and make sure that it's trained like that repetitively so it's sealed in. For a little bit more clarity on the whips, so in the, with the forward whip, we're flourishing. You want to make sure that that wrist, as if you have a watch on, the back side of this wrist is going to disappear behind the back. You want to make sure that the baton is not actively touching your back. That's going to cause what looks like a break from the front. So what you want to make sure is it's just hovering behind so it stays nice and on pattern. As soon as you touch, there's this tendency to come out off pattern. So make sure the baton is just looping around the body nice and smooth. So it's again important that the hand disappears. The index finger is on it. That's going to pull it around before we go loop. One, two, three, four. Compulsory number two, 
and that's left hand vertical forefinger. So to begin, same thing as the last one, we're going to start right hand on hip, and of course we're going to start left hand, thumb to big end. So at this point we've swapped our baton behind, behind our back while we're waiting for the judge to complete their score. So we finish here, the left hand goes down and straightens, we go outside loop up. Now in order for this to be a reverse flourish, it have, has to happen above the shoulder level and in line with the head. It can't be like, obviously it can't be over there, but you also can't be too low, otherwise it's not qualified as a reverse flourish. So it's really important that that outside loop happens high enough, then it goes up, thumb dips, reverse whip, outside loop again. This is where we're reconfiguring our fingers. Once again, we're tucking those three fingers behind the baton just to hook it in our index finger. So a little bit closer up, it goes reverse, outside loop. That's where I tuck those fingers underneath. And I bring my elbow in nice and close. You want this to be right in line with the belly button just for cleanliness. You don't want it out here. You don't want it too high. You want it right here, nice and controlled. Shoulders relaxed. One, two, three, four. Same thing, grab with the thumb, roll out. And this is just a quick tuck behind the back. So once again, Make sure that you're nice and extended, your backhand or this reverse loop happens high enough. We tuck, reverse whip, outside loop, one, two, three, four, palm up all the way until we get to this roll out. That's when the hand flips, we capture it on top, roll out, tuck, and complete. Again, the feet are still, the shoulders and the head remain forward, and it's as simple as that. Compulsory number three is a right hand horizontal four finger twirl. So again, we're in the right hand, so we're gonna go back to thumb to big end in the right hand as we tuck it behind our back. The first thing that happens, I'm gonna face the side so you can see this a little bit more clearly. Of course, the left hand goes directly to our hand on hip position. And the right hand comes out and around before we go under, over, and this transition right here, this is where we're going to unhook those three fingers, tuck them behind as the hand transitions palm toward the body as we go one, two, three, four, we do our roll out the very same, thumb on top, capture. Then we pass around to close. The feet, again, are not going to move. We're going to stay super still, square to the front. But it's important to remember that on this particular compulsory, we go under, over first. That will come into play as we do a little bit more horizontal um, tosses and things like that later. So be sure to emphasize with your students that on the four finger twirls, we go under, over first in the right hand. Here's a little bit of a close up of what that four finger twirl is going to look like. I think it's really important to emphasize to your students that your palm is going to be towards you and that the baton stays super close, locked into the fingers. As soon as that four finger twirl gets out in the tips of your fingers, that's when they lose control, the pattern gets off, and it's a lot easier to drop. So it's important that those stay nice and locked into the base of those fingers. We want them right there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Get to your pinky. So that thumb comes around, grabs, and close. It's important when you do these four fingers that they stay really in the central of your body, between your shoulders at about waist level. You don't want them out to the side. That feels pretty natural, but we want them right here in front. So it's really important that you emphasize the placement of that four finger curl as it happens directly in front of you. horizontal forefinger. So again, left hand thumb to big end, starts behind our back as always. Feet are super still, locked into position. Shoulders and head are, are straight forward. We're gonna come out and around, nice and horizontal. This is important. I have a lot of students that kind of bring their arms down and around. It's really important that they start horizontal right from the get-go. We pass horizontal figure eight, or otherwise known as a box twirl. So we go box twirl, we come up. This is where our palm is facing straight forward. So we go around, box twirl, right here at the bottom of the box. This is where I let loosen up with those three fingers, unlatch to get it in my index finger. I'm gonna come up, right in between my shoulders. So similar to number three, where it's in between our shoulders, but now instead of being at waist height, it's gonna be above the head. 
The elbow is going to be at a soft, natural bend. You don't want it too straight, otherwise you see the baton kind of goes at this natural angle. So soft elbow bend allows the wrist to have a little bit more flexibility and remain flat at the top. So we're here, palms face forward. One, two, three, four. We grab, tuck, and immediately we tuck that baton right behind the back. So again, with our number four, left hand horizontal, forefinger, we go up, down, we unlock those fingers. One, two, three, four, roll out, and down. Here's a close up of what that forefinger looks like. So we go up, down, this is where the fingers unlatch, and it goes right here. One, two, three, four, roll out. Now, as you noticed, as I slow this down, my baton has a tendency to kind of wobble and go off pattern. So this is an instance where speed can actually be your friend. Of course, you don't want them to do it too fast, out of control, but I do think that speed definitely has an impact in this compulsory in the overall effect of the pattern. Number five is kicking off our combination rolls with the elbow extension roll, left and right. Notice how I said left first. Even though we're starting with the left elbow extension roll, we're actually coming from the right hand. And as a student, once competing these B2 compulsories, I remember it being extra confusing when the judge said left first. So just to emphasize to your students that although we're going to be executing the left elbow first, the baton has to come from the right hand, and therefore we're starting thumb to big end in the right hand. So of course, we start feet together, Hands behind our back as usual. First thing we do is we do left hand to it to a hip, and we go flourish nice and tall. Now, be sure to pay attention here. This is another confusing point. On this particular trick, we are not going to be executing a whip. This is where I always got confused because on compulsory number six, as we'll see in just a moment, we do flourish whip. But on this one, it, since we're going directly into an elbow roll, we will not execute the whip. We will go straight from the flourish into the elbow. This will be a recurring theme later on in the compulsories, as you'll, as you'll notice. Anytime we go directly from the introduction of the flourish into the elbow, we do not execute the whip. All right, as we continue on, we go flourish directly into our elbow roll. We're going to make sure that the thumb is just below the middle. Of course, you wanna be as close to the middle as possible. You certainly don't wanna choke down here. That's going to be so obviously off of the center, but in order to make this Roll, roll smoothly into the first to the second. It's important that you're just slightly down, possibly like thumb on the middle line. And the baton going to swing down, thumb touching this side muscle here every single time. You don't want them to start the roll down here or reach on top. Those are big no-nos. They're definitely going to receive loss of points for those. So it's important that the baton be released directly straight up and down right here. We're gonna push it across. As the baton makes contact with the wrist, the left arm extends straight, the baton rolls down into the hand. Now a little bit faster, we go flourish, elbow to rest. As we execute this elbow extension roll, we're going to keep our feet nice and tight together. As soon as it's finished, you're going to bring the left arm down in front of your body, in front of the fronts of your legs, and tendu the right foot forward. Now notice it's opposite arm, opposite leg, and the first one is left arm, right leg, and we're going to pivot to the back. It's more that the toe goes straight to the back. We're in a jazz first position. The hips are in alignment. We're not over-rotating. We're not letting that shoulder fall out of place, but it's straight front to straight back. We close that right foot to left foot. The left arm swings under. We repeat the elbow extension roll in the right hand. Same thing. Tendu, hip shift. Shift the weight onto that left foot. We rotate, flourish for the step. Close left foot to right foot. Here's an up close look at the elbow extension roll. Although it can be a little bit difficult to help the students figure out the timing of this roll, what's really important is that the palm always stays down, the fingers always stay together, and there's no drop of the elbow. It should always remain up and tall and go directly in, directly out. A lot of students struggle with the timing of the push out of the extension itself. A lot of them will start before it rolls it's important to emphasize that the baton needs to touch your wrist first before it rides forward and around in front of the thumb. Of course, on the opposite side as well, this one will be facing the back. We go left arm, right arm up, extend. Number 
number six continues on with our combination rolls with the elbow retraction roll right and left. Now, as I mentioned earlier, since on the previous compulsory, compulsory number five, we went immediately from the flourish into the elbow, now we're going into the retraction roll. So we are going to add that width back in. Now, as you can imagine, that can be a point of confusion. So it's important to emphasize the difference between the introduction of compulsory number five and compulsory number six, talking about how when we go directly to the elbow, we skip the width. The way that I describe it to my, some of my students is when it's going to go really close to your body, you want to keep the flourish really close to your body. When you have in a roll, it's getting ready to go out and away from you first. We have to kind of pull it back like a bow and arrow. We got to go back first before we can go forward. So I usually describe this by saying, okay, with our elbow retraction roll, since we're starting out, we're going to do a little bit of pulling back our bow and arrow before we let it go. So as I begin this compulsory, I'm going to go flourish with. I'm going to go out first, make sure that my baton is at chest level, let go in the hand roll, and roll it in. So, for those of you who are trying to explain this in slower terms, we're going to hand roll over the top of the hand from thumb to pinky. So it's a hand roll going from thumb to pinky. It's going to go up by the pinky. As soon as it hits their pinky, we're gonna snake it in. Elbow stays nice and flat. Again, this is where I have a lot of students bring their elbow down. So it's important to mention that our elbow should always stay nice and flat the whole time. Fingertips together. As soon as our fingertips are apart, we're gonna lose some technical points. So make sure that those fingertips stay nice and tight. We're gonna catch the baton immediately under the arm with the thumb up. So we started them to begin. We're gonna go flourish, whip, elbow retraction roll, which means we're going to catch the baton, thumb to begin. Once again, because we're getting ready to mirror this on the opposite side. So similar to compulsory number five, luckily for us, the footwork is very, very similar. As we scoop this baton down, our right hand's gonna to go to our hip. We're gonna ton do right. Let me scoop back so you can see this. I'm gonna ton do right as the baton swoops down. I turn to face the back, same situation. We're gonna whip first, elbow retraction roll, same maneuver in the opposite arm. Same thing, I'm gonna drop my baton down. As I drop my baton down, my elbow's gonna come down to my hand on hip position. Ton do left, shift my weight as I turn my shoulders to face the front. I'm ton doing right foot front. Step to the side, close left foot to right foot. Number seven is our two continuous elbow rolls, forward and reverse. This is compulsory number seven, and it's our next combination roll. Luckily for us, the footwork, again, is very similar. And to follow that rule where if our baton is going immediately to our elbow, we do not have a whip. So to contrast, number five goes straight to our elbow, to the extension. No whip. On number six, we're going out to the retraction, so we have a whip, but on number seven, we're going back directly to the elbow, so we have no whip again. So make sure that you emphasize with your students that there is a difference between these two, and if you can come up with any little tricks to help their memory on that, it would be greatly appreciated, I'm sure of it. So we start two hands behind our back. As usual, our feet are very similar to the last two compulsories, luckily for us. We go flourish immediately to our double elbow roll. Again, it's really important that the thumbnail be really tightly pressed against that tricep muscle and our fingertips are nice and close. So soft push, soft handed release of the baton. A lot of students will grip this baton really tightly as they go into this double elbow roll and that will eat up some of the momentum so their baton will start to slip, go slowly and it starts to slide. I do think this is another compulsory where speed can be a little bit of your friend as long as it's not out of control and it's within the student's comfort zone. So for here, we go flourish, double elbow catch. So I started thumb to big end and I should finish this thumb to big end. I'm gonna catch with my thumb up underneath my right shoulder. So right here we go. One, two, catch three. Same situation, I'm gonna ton do as I swing my baton down and flourish to face the back. Close my feet together, we're gonna do the same thing in reverse. I'm gonna catch right hand, thumb to big end. Same situation, I'm gonna go down, bring my hand to my waist. Flourish, step. Something that I want to emphasize is after you finish the first elbow roll, the right elbow is going to remain in place. So don't let them bring that hand to the hip. It's gonna stay up on top of the shoulder. So I have my fingertips grazing my collarbone here and making sure my elbow is nice and still, especially right here. So it's gonna be really clear from the side if their elbow's down. Make sure it's nice and tall and close. So you do that reverse. This is where the hand goes to the hip. Flourish, step close. Next up, we have compulsory number eight. It's the half flat back neck roll. We're gonna start right hand, thumb to big end behind our back, and our feet are going to be in this jazz first position. 
luckily the entirety of the compulsory. So as we go around, we're going to establish what will become very, very consistent in all the number eights and all of the sets of compulsories to follow. So it's important that we establish this correctly right off the bat. So we're gonna come around, over, under, over. So the first one that happens is going to be straight out at shoulder level, nice soft wrist. And then we go under, which is low, over, which is soft natural bend, and the elbow over the head. And that's our introduction to number eight. Following our number eight introduction, we're going to elevate the left hand out to shoulder level as that right hand comes to the neck. The thumbnail is going to be pressed against the side of the neck here. Make sure it's got really nice contact. And we're going to go around, release, and reception. So we go straight from this arm out to this arm out. And I'm just going to do the little baby half flat back neck roll right here before I go over the head and close. So this is all, once again, facing the front, feet are together, nice and simple. I will say the speed of this can throw off some students. So incorporating this into a training regimen where they do this as a part of their warm-ups can really help them become comfortable with that half flat back neck roll. What you don't want to do is you want to make sure that it's not happening as like a pass. Of course, the arm is out to the side, especially to emphasize this. You want to make sure that they don't have this passing moment, but it actually leaves the hand and rolls across the back of the neck. Compulsory number 
number 11, which is right hand vertical backhand flips. We have some new footwork. We're actually going to be rotating to the right now for the first time in this set of compulsory. So it's important to make sure that our students know the difference between these different footwork on these different compulsories. So for number 11, we're going to start right hand, thumb to big end behind our back. We go flourish, whip, and as we're whipping, we're going to tongue the left foot this time directly out in front of us. Left hand is in our hand on hip position. Before we come up and around, we're going to half turn or quarter turn and directly to the right side. And this right hand is going to go over our shoulder. We're going to do keep our elbow nice and low. We're going to do two, one revolution backhand flips. After the second one, we're going to step back onto our left foot, flourish, and close. Overall, pretty simple, but again, same with the last one, it can be a little bit tricky to simply stop after those two but still make sure that it flows without doing any additional outside loops or anything. So it should be nice and clean, just the flourish, flip, loop, flip, flip, step, and close. What's important about this backhand flip is that our elbow is not lifting up. It's really important here that our elbow is nice and low and that arm is almost extending completely as you're pushing it with your index finger. So it's this wrist snap that makes it a backhand and not an elbow lift. That elbow lift doesn't allow the hand to really go backhand. It simply forces the students to use their thumb to let the baton roll off their thumb, and that's not correct. So we're really looking for a technique on this backhand flip, and that's going to happen with the index finger up and the complete twist of the wrist. Next up, we have compulsory number 12, left hand vertical backhand flips. These are a little bit more simple in terms of footwork than the right hand, but again, we're gonna start with the left hand, thumb to big end. We go reverse flourish. Reverse whip, single outside loop. We tuck that elbow in before we go two, one revolution backhand flips. Here's where we do a simple step out to the right side with the right foot, reverse loop, and tuck it in and close. Nice and simple on that number 12 left hand vertical backhand flips. On these backhand flips, make sure once again that that elbow is nice and tight. We're pushing down and rotating the wrist all the way around. We finally made it to our last compulsory, compulsory number 13, which is a left hand horizontal toss, right hand catch. Left hand toss means left hand thumb to big end. We start behind our back as usual. Feet are nice and still throughout this entire compulsory, so finally we have a little bit of relief on the footwork as we round out this set of compulsories. So we come out and around nice and flat, similar to the way that we did it for the flat finger twirl on the left hand. So come out and around nice and flat, matched hand pass directly in front, fingers are nice and tight and together. What we don't want to see, what the judges are really looking for is that your hands are not too far apart. What matched hand pass is really looking for is our fingers touching right in the middle. From here, the right hand drops to the waist, we go flat box twirl. This is a two to three revolution toss. And while the baton is in the air, both hands are going to go onto our hips for a moment. What I used to struggle with as an athlete was making sure that my toss was high enough that I wasn't just switching my hands, like I just demonstrated there, but instead it was high enough that I had a brief moment where I had both on my hips. It's a nice picture perfect moment that we're looking for. Now on the catch of this horizontal toss, this is where things get a little bit trickier. On any horizontal toss that you receive in the right hand, unless it's like a backhand or something, any standard toss, you want that palm up to the sky, Fingertips pointed back toward you and thumb in front. That's where that catch is going to happen. On this particular one, what we're going to do is on the catch, it's going to be a slide. So we come around, box twirl, toss, slide. This is a very important moment. This might take some training for your athletes to get used to, but that slide, then we come around, we're going to hand it to ourselves. So this left hand is going to flip upside down to a little bit of a backhand pass. We go pass and close. But up, this is what the catch looks like. I'll come a little bit closer so you can see. We come around, toss, slide, catch. For our two to three revolution toss, you don't want it much higher than the head, but it is definitely going to go overhead. You also don't want it too small, right? Otherwise, our hands aren't going to be able to make that nice picture perfect moment we talked about. So make sure that the baton is going one, two, over the head, two to three revolutions. 
here's a complete set of B2 compulsories facing the front, as if you were the judge. I'm going to start with my sleeves. Compulsory number one. Compulsory number two. Compulsory number three. Compulsory number four. Compulsory number five. Compulsory number 11. Compulsory number 12. Compulsory number 13. Here's our B2 compulsories facing the back. So this is what they would feel like as if you were the athlete following along. So salute. Compulsory number one. Compulsory number two. Compulsory number three. Compulsory number 10. Compulsory number 11. Compulsory number 12. That concludes our B2 tutorial. Hopefully this was helpful in kind of deciphering what that written description says and turned into something that's a little bit more visual and teachable. So those tips and tricks are really important to the technique and the technique will definitely build a foundation for your students' success. So I look forward to seeing those successful students out on the floor. And if you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop those below so I can get to them. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.